All right, shoot and ready. Stand by. Two point zero two. Two point zero two. All right, uh, holster up. Uh, go drink water, Ranger. Go rejam your mags. Guys, welcome to Tactical Rifleman. This week, I want to talk about uh, your draw, making your draw just a little bit faster. Accuracy is important. Number one, yes, you've got to be accurate. You can't miss fast enough to win in a gunfight. But in a gunfight, the guy with the AK cannot miss you at this range. So you have to be fast. You have to be fast. Everybody wants to have their draw lightning fast, lightning fast. Okay. Uh, well, standing here as the instructor, I see a lot of common mistakes that people make. Break it down step by step. Everybody wants to be faster. The best way to do that is break it down step by step. So, number one, uh, right, because you're just drawing real fast and pulling that gun out. And you're like, ah, making lots of noise with it. You're drawing fast. You're pulling it out. Your time will be fast, but I don't care if you have a one-second draw if you can't hit the kill zone in the center of the target, all right? Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, yes, but it needs to be economical. It needs to, you need to be able to make up speed when you can. So let's break down your draw step by step. Now, step one, uh, whether you're starting, and there are competitions, you can be hand down, hands up, I don't care. Uh, military guys, you'll see a lot of times, we start from what we call our ready position, so that's why we don't do that. You'll see us stand like this, right? But the other stance that you can often start from is what we call the interview stance. Stand like this, hey, look, dude, I don't want any trouble. And then when it escalates, this is like, dude, you're, you're trying to de-escalate, but when he makes you throw that light switch, you need to be able to throw that light switch. So a lot of times we'll practice from here or here. I'm in my fighting stance. Now, from here, I need to be able to move my hand from the, uh, from the ready position, interview stance, to my pistol as fast as I can. You'll see guys smooth the exact same speed. They move the gun the same speed the whole way. We can do better than that, right? The whole point is, is we want to have a faster draw. Make up speed where you can. You can move your hand fast from here to here. Cobra strike that thing. Make that hand move as fast as possible. That is not unsafe. There's no way you can shoot yourself moving your hand from here to here as fast as you can. Now, one thing I want to add to that though is, because uh, that is the most important part of the draw, is that initial grip of the, per, uh, of the pistol. You can grab the pistol faster than the next guy, but if you grab it low, too much space, below the back strap, or you grab it high, you're not going to get an accurate shot. You can't grab it left, you can't grab it right. You have to have a perfect grip. So that's what you need to practice. You'll watch me on the range all day long, walking along the firing line, and I am literally dry firing the most important part of my draw, which is that establishing that initial grip and releasing retention on that holster. I dry fire that all day long. Now, but you also notice I don't immediately grab that perfect position. What I do is I deliberately come a little further back and I deliberately slide my hand forward. Why? I appreciate you asking. I do that because I'm a combat shooter. I'm not a competition shooter. What do I mean by that? Appreciate you guys asking. You go to the Pew Pew channels where everybody shoots real, real fast. They've got those one second draws, 0.7 second draws. Watch their videos and they are lightning fast. I don't care what academy they're at. They've got their competition t-shirts on with all their NASCAR sponsorship. Uh, they might have different pants on or different shirt, different hat, but notice they are always, always standing in the exact same spot every time. Their holster is always in the exact same spot every time. So if he's a right-handed shooter, for example, they'll, they'll always have that left foot forward. Why? That's what they were taught. I was taught the same thing. The reality, though, is combat shooting what is combat shooting? You need to be able to shoot accurate. You need to be able to shoot accurate fast, but we also want to be able to shoot accurate and fast while moving. Now, am I going to go across the modern battlefield like this with my left foot always forward? No, I am not. I am not. So not only do I need to be able to shoot with my left foot forward, 
with that rifle, but I also need, able, need to be able to shoot with my right foot, uh, foot forward. Also, my feet are not always going to be planted like this. There may be times where I'm fighting on the ground. There may be times where I've got the guy in the chicken wing, knee in the center of his shoulder blades, pinning him, and I've got to take care of another threat in the room. My point is that holster is not always going to be in the same spot by me if you focus just on my show just on my uh, holster right here by me switching just my feet that holster has moved yeah it's only moved a couple of an inch a couple of inches but that will screw up your perfect grip at the moment of truth in that gunfight when you need it the most so combat shooting that's what we want to learn here it's why they come to us here Establish that grip by coming back a little bit too low and get in the habit of sliding that hand forward. Here's why. If I accidentally hit a little bit too far forward by trying to grip perfect, now I hit too high. But if I deliberately try to aim rear and I hit too far forward, my hand is perfect. If I hit a little bit too far back, my hand can still slide forward to my gun. Step one, initial grip of the firearm, You've got to have it. So from here to here as fast as you can. Hand comes down, cobra strike it, slide it forward, release retention. Step two is release retention as fast as possible and get those sights pointed down range. Now you notice my finger is straighted off the trigger. If I had to shoot from right here, I could. The gun is pointed down range. All right, so from here to here as fast as I can move, from here to here as fast as I can move. We're, we're making up time, we're making our draw faster. The next step, step three, is bringing my hands together. Now, as I bring my hands together, I'm focusing out in front of me, I'm focusing on that threat, and I'm gonna bring that gun up underneath that dominant eye. As I'm still focusing on that bad guy, I'm gonna acquire that front sight, and as, my, as I'm pushing the front sight at the target, my rear sight will marry up, and I'll continue to push the perfect sight picture out to the target. Now, one common mistake that I see demonstrators make, students make, my demonstrator right here just made it, 2.02 on his draw, but his hands moved plenty fast enough. What got him was a lot of guys draw fast, but then when they get it full arm extension, then they start pulling that trigger. They, in other words, what I'm saying is they draw fast, but then they don't start pulling the trigger until they're all the way at full arm extension. Now, this is combat shooting. There are exceptions. That law enforcement officer that's doing the traffic stop that has to draw. Uh, that assaulter who's getting ready to uh, climb to the top of the ladder so he lowers his rifle and he brings out his pistol. Yes, I understand there are reasons to stay off the trigger. The situation I'm talking about right now is the draw where you have a threat to your front that warrants deadly force. In other words, when I've made that decision to draw, I already know I'm going to burn this guy down. I'm going to mix metal and meat together. I'm going to take the rest of his life away from him. Right? So I could, if necessary, fire from right here. Right? The threat warrants deadly force. But I'm going to marry my hands as I'm pushing out. Rather than start pulling when I'm already at full arm extension, as soon as I marry my hands together, this is where I want you to get on the trigger. Not down here. For some of my students that have shot the bottom of their holsters, Susan, I'm not throwing you under the bus here. I'm not doing that, right? You wait till the pistol's pointed down range. Once you've married them together, right here is when you get on that trigger. Uh, some people call it the preset or the Glock wall. Almost all triggers, so long as it's a combat gun, not a competition gun with no over travel and everything, I, you'll have that wall you can feel in your trigger, and it's different on every gun. So get on it and get to 80% before you get all the way to full arm extension. Make up time from here to here, make up time from here to here. As I'm bringing the gun up, now couldn't you make up time going as fast as you could? Man, move that, that hand fast. You can. The problem with that though is think of it, it's not first base. You can't overrun it. If you try to draw real fast, you'll end up bringing the gun up over the top of the target. Think of it as second base in baseball. You have to stop 
right there at that perfect sight picture. So move that gun as fast as you can most of the way, but then ease it and slow that last little bit. As you're going to 80% on that trigger, you slowly start bringing it in slow onto the target. Now, what this allows you to do is once you're on target, you get that an adequate sight picture to get an acceptable hit. A target at three meters, my sight picture does not have to be perfect. If it's a target at 12 meters, your sights have to be perfectly aligned, all right? So you're, you're drawing, get the gun up fast, marry those hands together, already on the trigger, press it out. I'm at 80% on that trigger. Now, once you're on 80% and it's lined up, you're at 80%. 90%, 95, 100, the gun goes off. Follow through, did I hit, did I get the desired effect? Is there anybody else that needs love? If there is, follow that second shot. Follow through. You can't jerk 20%. If you're at 80% on the trigger, you can't jerk 20%. It's only moving like a 16th of an inch. You can't move, you can't. Now, so you see where we're saving time. We're saving time moving our hands from the ready position to here. We're saving time moving our hand up. We're going as fast as we can most of the way. As we're marrying our hands together, we're going to 80% on that trigger. We're already at that wall, that preset. And then as we get that perfect sight picture, we roll through that last 20%. Easy, right? That final sight picture, you get the alignment, you get that trigger. Practice correctly, guys. Now, you got to remember, it takes three to 5,000 repetitions in order to push something into your subconscious mind. This is new to you. That's fine. But get in the habit of drawing, already be at 80%, apply that last 20%, follow through. Follow through, reassess, reholster. Start slow, develop the proper muscle memory, going to 80% on the trigger, get it out there, perfect sight picture, Roll through that last 20% on the trigger, follow through. Do that and then keep following, uh, keep, now, the more practice you do, remember I just said three to 5,000 reps. Three to 5,000 reps, guys, that's a lot of ammo, right? No, it's not. You can do this dry firing. Could I not? I could do this dry firing, all right? Gun's clear. Can I literally not do this same thing? Click. The only thing you can't do dry firing is recoil management. But as far as drawing properly, already going to that wall, dropping that last 10 uh, that last 20% on the trigger, and seeing which way that sear breaks left, right, up, and down, guys, practice it, but practice correctly, and speed will come. I promise you. All right. Start building up your speed until you start getting outside the block. All right, push yourself to go faster, to go faster, to go faster. Once you start getting outside the black circle on the target, shoot that uh, eight inch circle, 10 inch circle, whatever it is. Once you're getting outside the block, that's it for the day. That's how fast you're gonna go. Keep building the repetitions. But don't just try to beat the pro timer because you want good numbers on these things. Guys, this is nothing but a tool. That's all it is. What matters is holes in the target and you being able to properly do this safely that's what's gonna make you a better shooter. Practice correctly, guys. Work on those draws. Make up time where you can. Get on that trigger early. Already be at 80%. And I'll tell you what, you are gonna become a faster yet still accurate shooter with a pistol. And that's what this is all about. Anyways, that's all I've got for this week. And um, you know the deal. Leave the comments below. I read them all. And uh, I'll see y'all next Friday. New video every Friday. Y'all take care. and. Uh, Shoot straight. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. This way. Most still yeah, just okay. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. 
If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.